Hi and welcome to the third episode of Umpire's Call. Last episode, we had talked about how the DRS has evolved over time. Today, we'll be talking about any guesses? Umpire's Call. Joining me is Vivek, cricket umpire from Melbourne, Australia, and the owner of the YouTube channel Cricket Arbitrator. So, Vivek, let's get into the topic at hand. A lot of cricketers have asked for the umpire's call to be scrapped. Can you explain to us what exactly this umpire's call is, and should it be should it stay or should it be scrapped? Right from the advent of the game, we've always had umpires in play. Like, but um, there was always a human element to the game, and that's why it kind of. Uh, creates that atmosphere that people are talking about it. And if there's any mistakes made with umpire, um, people get excited. They talk about the, those mistakes and, uh, or any controversies or anything of that sort. So that human element is something that, uh, you know, the, the re that keeps the game alive and makes everyone talk about the game so much. Uh, therefore, to me personally, um, by taking away the human element, it was like saying it's either black or white. Right now, it becomes like a uh, like a robotic uh, sort of thing. Like you don't need any umpires anymore. That is a sort of uh, impression that I I get when people say take out the umpires call. And uh, now you you know you, you might take the umpires off as well. Like you know let let the technology take over and let it decide whether it's a no ball or a white. I would say still we need to be we need, umpires uh, need to be there. Um, and uh, the human element is something uh, that uh, that's been involved with the game for years and uh, why change it so and and uh, yeah some former cricketers like ian chapel have um, when quizzed about umpire call have told us that um, uh, most players don't have issues with uh, the 50 50 decisions when i say 50 50 decisions i'm referring to the lbw decisions where um, in the over the years we've seen uh, every time the batsman plays forward uh, the benefit of doubt goes to the batsman. So that benefit of doubt is something that as we grew up, we're all used to the saying that benefit of doubt goes to the batsman. And, uh, you know, we've seen cricket played that way. Uh, most of the umpire, umpiring decisions uh, in the past years have been based on this principle that uh, the benefit of doubt goes to the batsman. Now, by taking away the umpire's call, I'm afraid that benefit of doubt will now start going back to the bowlers. So every time the umpire says not out and it comes up on the DRS saying uh, umpire's call um, and the ball is like, you know, hitting the wickets on the top of the bail. Now that decision is going to be overturned because there's no umpire's call and the batsmen are going to be given out. So that to me is a big shift uh, in the way the game uh, is being played. And uh, the other reason I would be against taking away the umpire's call factor is uh, has to do with uh, the psyche of the umpire. Like, um, you know, nobody wants to be proved wrong. Like, you know, when you talk about the umpires, nobody thinks about the fact that when an umpire gets a decision wrong, the, the whole world is watching them. Like millions of viewers are watching them. And it's like as if like uh, when the decision gets overturned, they feel like, oh, shit, they made a mistake. And when you're in the middle, you can't afford to have a lapse in concentration. So when you know that, oh, you made a mistake, it makes it very hard for you to concentrate uh, on the next delivery. As an umpire, uh, once you know that you've made a mistake, right, uh, you've got to forget it. And you just got to focus on the next ball. Because if you're still living with your mistake, you're going to make more mistakes. So... That is going to definitely, by taking away the umpire's call, means uh, more decisions are going to be overturned because the umpires no longer have that cushion. Yeah, So more decisions are going to be overturned. That's not going to help the umpiring in the middle. So that's going to affect, definitely affect the, the psyche of the umpire and it's going to make it really hard for the umpires to be concentrating for the, the whole period of the game. And uh, these are reasons why I would say uh, this keep it simple, stick with the basics. The umpire's call, human element is a part of the game. It's always been the part of the game. Let's, why, why change it? Let's keep it. Uh, that's an amazingly new perspective, Vivek. So there is a message here for today's youth as well. We are all worried about artificial intelligence and robots going to take away our jobs. But remember guys, the only thing that the robots can't take away from us is human judgment. Great Vivek. So there is another instance of an umpire making a call which is uh, now referred to as soft signal. So on the contrary, I feel that this is much more far-fetched because 
let us say the catch uh, there is a catch which is being taken at long on and the umpire is kind of like let's say 50 meters away from where the catch has been taken do you think it is fair for an umpire to call something which is you know happening 50 meters away from him and do you think that uh, you know it's actually justified because that can actually be a yes or no question rather than an umpire's call because the umpire cannot see exactly what's happening so far away from him and also that since a soft signal is given there should be a conclus conclusive evidence to prove the umpire wrong so in that situation is it really necessary to have a soft signal yeah so Vignesh, so firstly uh, the reason why we have this uh, soft signal, uh, I mean, every time the catch is taken and then you see the umpire going back to the third umpire, but then he gives you a soft signal like out or not out. Um, the, the first, firstly, let us talk about why the umpire does that. So when you go back, um, the on-field umpires are responsible for making judgments on the field of play, right? And when they are not sure, they go back to the third umpire. When you look at catches or slip catches or any catches for that matter, the, the third umpire is not a techno technology expert. He doesn't know how camera works. He doesn't understand camera angles, or he may not understand the camera angles. And he's, uh, his um, area of expertise is uh, making judgments on the field of play and knowing the loss, right? So from a camera technology point of view, when you have a close catch, when you dissect it, zoom it, it appears as if um, like the ball is actually touching the ground. Like, uh, so someone, when he looks at the replays, more often than not, the ball seems to be hitting the ground, even though it's actually landing on the tip of the finger. Like it's something like, a, you know, the photographic effect, like you know, next to the sun, you open, the, open your mouth in a beach, you know, near the, during the sunrise, and the photo comes out as if like, you're actually biting the sun. The same way, when you're focusing, when you're a third umpire watching the catch taken and uh, you keep zooming it, it appears as if the ball is touching the ground, but the ball is actually landing on, the, um, on, your, on your hand. It's actually landing on your tip of the finger and going into your hand, and it gives you a different picture when you, when you zoom the camera, and, and it looks as if the ball's actually hit the ground and popped into your... So that is precisely, that's exactly why the on-field umpire tries to help out the third umpire by giving the, the soft signal. So uh, you've raised a good point in that uh, because of that soft signal, it may sometimes could make, uh, uh, make the spectators uh, think, why is that if he's not sure, sitting, you know, he's giving a soft signal out when the catch has been taken in the boundary or in, in a mid on. So it is basically, it does something to do with the instincts. Right. Uh, so as an umpire, we don't have the support of technology when you're ump umpiring the local competitions. It's competitive cricket, but we don't have DRS. So what we do is we take a lot of cue from the body language of the players. So when a batsman gets out to the wicketkeeper, as the wicketkeeper catches the ball, he goes like, he catches, ooh. And then because the slip fielders are celebrating, immediately the ooh turns into yeah, so sort of thing, you know? So you pick up those little things. And then as an umpire, you have to work sometimes with the body language of the players. And then you say, sorry guys, that's not out. And the balls hit the ground. And sometimes the players um, accept it. And I've had instances where similar things have happened. And at the end of the over, the slip keep fielder or someone case, uh, I didn't think I didn't think I took the catch and he's told me and he has admitted that. So these things happen. So that is why the instincts of the umpires are so important. And um, the, the way we could probably go around this is by rather than the umpire signaling in front of the cameras and the whole world watching him signal the soft signal, we could have a system where the umpire can probably use the microphones you know, and saying, uh, yes, I think that's not out. I have a feeling that's out. So that way, uh, people don't know what he's talking to, what he's talking about, you know, and, and yet he's still, able to, he's still able to pass on some critical information to the third umpire so he can make an um, informed decision. Great, Vivek. That was a really easy yet effective suggestion. So guys, that's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed the content. Do like, share, subscribe to SportsZN and Cricket Arbitrator. And we'll catch you in the next video where we are going to talk about a lot of interesting decisions which the umpires have taken, which has affected the course of cricket. Thank you.